Here we're going to look at different events happening in the labour market and how this affects the wage rate. So what happens to how much people are paid. Remember that the wage rate in the labour market is just determined by the demand for labour by firms and the supply of labour by people. That's all. You're just looking at the interaction of the demand for labour and the supply of labour and that's where you find the wage rate, which is essentially the price that you're paying for the labour. But you pay a wage rather than paying a price for the people. And these are 10 different situations. We'll do this in a couple of videos. And we want to see in each one what happens to the wage rate. So I'm going to draw four diagrams at the bottom because there are four scenarios that could occur. All of these you need to be labelling your Y axis, remember Y in the sky, wage rate, and you label it at the end of the axis up here so that it's out of the way of everything going on in the diagram. And then this is just quantity on the X axis for all of them. And in each situation, we're going to have the demand for labour. Remember, demand goes down. So demand for labour in every single diagram and then we'll also in every diagram we'll also have the supply of labour so the demand this is being demanded by firms they are demanding people to work for their businesses and the supply of labour this is all of the workers who are supplying their labour to the market and remember, when you have a demand curve and a supply curve, you can then find the equilibrium in that market. Remember, these diagrams are all looking at the labour market. That's why this is labelled wage rate here. And for each of these, we're going to have an equilibrium here. So find the equilibrium in every diagram and put those in. And remember in the exam to do all of this with a ruler like I am now so that your presentation is really good. They can see really clearly what you're doing and you don't miss any marks because they can't see quite what's going on. Right, because we're looking at the labour market, remember that the demand for labour is what we call a derived demand. Derived means that it's come from something else, this demand. That's because labour in the building market, to build houses, for example, builders, electricians, carpenters, we're not demanding them just because we want to have the workers sitting there and um, doing work for us. We're demanding them because of the demand for houses, if we're just talking about the housing market. So due to the demand for houses, that's why we're demanding this labour. Therefore, if there's a change in the demand for houses, then that's going to change the demand for labour in the labour market. So you need to be thinking about what's happening in the housing market and then that will affect what's happening in the labour market. So the first one, the economy enters a recession. Now, if we're in a recession, that means that people's incomes go down. That means that the quantity demanded of houses goes down. And if less houses are being demanded, then the quantity demanded of building labour is going to go down. We know that if we have a decrease in the quantity demanded, demand shifts to the left. Remember, left is less. So you do a parallel shift like this. You put in your D1 nice and clearly. You put in your new equilibrium, which is here. And you can see that your wage rate has gone from little w to little w1 and your quantity has gone from little q to little q1. So therefore your wage has gone down. So we'll call this diagram number one. So this one is diagram number one. I'm going to look at the other questions in the next videos.